Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. In today's headlines, over 100 countries pledged to end deforestation by 2030. Casualties rise in explosions outside military hospital in Kabul. Families of arrested Chilean protesters launch hunger strike for clemency. And metro train workers in Lisbon strike for better working conditions. In our first story, 110 countries have pledged to end and reverse deforestation by 2030. The agreement was announced on November 2nd as part of the COP26 climate conference. The Glasgow Leaders' Declaration on Forest and Land Use will cover over 33.7 million square kilometers of forests. Its signatories include the United States, UK, Russia, Canada, China and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. All 110 countries together include 85% of the world's forest cover. The deal includes $19 billion in public and private funds. 12 countries have pledged around $11 billion in public funding between 2021 and 2025 to help poorer countries restore damaged land. Five countries and a group of charities have pledged $1.7 billion in funding to indigenous peoples and local communities. These communities have been at the forefront of climate action and have faced increasingly deadly violence. Experts have warned that the commitments made during the summit must actually be delivered. A US official has stated that 90 countries have joined a pact to cut down methane emissions by 30% of 2020 levels by 2030. These emissions account for nearly one-third of all global warming caused by human actions. Meanwhile, as COP26 progresses, over 250 organizations have released a statement warning against nature-based solutions. Companies like Microsoft have tied their net zero and carbon neutrality commitments to offsetting emissions through such solutions. For instance, Nestle's net zero plan alone could require 4.4 million hectares of land per year for offsets. Environmental groups argue that nature-based projects will further enclose the living spaces of indigenous peoples, peasants and other forest-dependent communities. In our next story, we go to Afghanistan, which witnessed twin bomb blasts on November the 2nd. At least 19 people have been killed and around 50 have been wounded. The Interior Ministry stated that the explosions took place at the entrance of the Sardar Mohammad Daud Khan Hospital in Kabul. There were also reports of gunfire shortly after the blasts. At the time of recording this episode, it is not known who carried out the attacks. The 400-bed military hospital was previously attacked by the Islamic State terror group in 2017. The official Bakhtar news agency quoted witnesses saying that IS fighters had entered the hospital and clashed with security forces. Meanwhile, Al Jazeera quoted witnesses saying that it was a car bomb. ISIS affiliate Islamic State in Khorasan province has launched a series of attacks on mosques and other places since August. Nearly a hundred people were killed in attacks on mosques in Kunduz and Kandahar provinces in October. Families of people imprisoned during Chile's 2019 protest have launched a hunger strike. The protest began on October 27th and is taking place at the offices of the Copper Workers Collective in Santiago. Affected families are demanding that Chile's Senate approve the law of general pardon. The measure was prompted as a political solution with a humanitarian sense for those arrested during the social outburst. The National Assembly of Relatives of the Prisoners of the Revolt estimate that the pardon will impact 5,000 people. The body has identified 1,058 prisoners linked to the protest so far. The general pardon law was supposed to be voted in the Senate on November the 2nd. However, it was postponed at the last minute and sent to the Constitutional Committee. Meanwhile, concerns have grown over the weakening health of the hunger strikers. Chilean forces, especially the notorious Carabineros, responded to the 2019 protest with excessive violence. According to the Human Rights Watch, over 15,000 people were detained between October and November alone.
serious abuses including beatings and sexual abuse in detention were reported. A recent statement by the United Nations also noted that excessive use of preventive detention against protesters. Meanwhile, the Carabineros announced that they had opened 1,228 investigation into alleged abuses. Only 14% of the cases were met with administrative action and only 14 officers were expelled from the force. And for our final story, we go to Portugal, where train workers have been organizing for better working conditions. Metropolitano de Lisboa workers have been holding strikes for more than a week. Three partial strikes were observed on October 26th and 28th and November the 2nd. The protest actions have been organized by the Federation of Transport and Communication Unions or FECTRANS. Workers were demanding better working conditions and opportunities for career advancement. This includes the application of all commitments made by the Ministry of Environment and Climate Action. Workers were also protesting a freeze on their wages and have demanded the replenishment of jobs. These include workers for inspections as well as traffic agents. Starting November the 1st, FECTRANS has launched a 10-day overtime strike. Meanwhile, a 24-hour work stoppage will also be observed on November the 4th. Similar strikes were also observed throughout May and June. Meanwhile, the Lisbon bus station was also shut down on Tuesday as the Independent Union of Bus Workers observed a 24-hour strike. Workers have argued that they are being paid a base salary of 700 euros while an agreement of 750 euros has already been reached with other companies. The strikes are taking place just as Lisbon hosts the 2021 Web Summit, which is one of the world's largest tech conferences. 40,000 people are expected to attend. That's all for today. For more details and stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Thank you.